And Brentford have got to get a goal and they've got to get one quickly if they're to get back in this game. Needing three to take us into extra time as we had here in the first round against Fulham a month ago. Now Blissett with a lovely layoff to Cadet. Goes for the return, drives one with the right foot only just wide of Geno's goal. Best move of the match from Brentford. Great combination from Cadet and Gary Blissett. And such a shame that the big number 10 shot just... Oh, on side, it's more danger for Brentford here. Garner in on the keeper. Uh, Smelders gets his body in the way. And Brentford clear the danger. Well, my goodness me, Simon Garner. Peeling away once again from the re rearranged Brentford back four. I was just about to tell you that at the start of the second half, Andy Feel has gone into the back four. Alongside Evans, Millen and Jamie Bates on the far side. And that's allowed Roger Stanislaus to come forward. There's a terrible challenge from Keith Jones, who's already been booked. And you have to be careful. And in fact, the referee decides that that was simply mistimed exuberance. No danger. Uh, Colin Henry was up on his feet, sportingly, didn't make much of the foul, it was a bad one, but on we go with the game. Bob Booker, now Bentford being forced to absorb a lot more pressure in this second half. Rearranged at the back, they've lost their... In side once again there's a man clear here surely this is number three Scott Sellers grabbing off the move when Andy Kennedy was released on the far side as the Brentford defense rather lost their heads and their shape just for a second or two there Andy Feely went diving in for a, a ball he was never going to reach on the halfway line and the ball was whipped out to that far side where Kennedy made 15 yards, squared the ball across the penalty area. Scott Sellers makes it number three, and that's the scoreline we had at Ewood in the first leg. So here at Griffin Park now, no doubt about it, those two injuries in the first half have completely demoralized Brentford, and they're now losing here by three goals to one. Scott Sellers adding to earlier goals from Atkins and Simon Garner. And that really has been a complete reversal of what we saw in the first 30 minutes here tonight at Griffin Park. And I'm afraid Brentford have given the ball away again on the far side. There were three Blackburn forwards just for a second there against two Brentford defenders. There can't thread the ball through to Blissett. And it's safely into Geno's hands. So Blackburn looking comfortable for a passage into the third round of the Littlewoods Cup. They've never been further in this competition than the fourth round. But of course they tasted success at Wembley just a couple of seasons ago when winning the full Members' Cup. Uh, no doubt about it, manager Don Mackay's major priority this season will be to get the club out of the second division and back into the first. Put a good run in the cup, I'm sure, will be welcome and do them no harm. Well, Brentford have acquitted themselves well, having overcome neighbours Fulham in the first round, but it looks very much as if they're going out of the competition here this evening. But not if Richard Cadet can have his say, and he scores his second goal of the night. And a fine goal it is too. So let's not write Brentford off yet. Richard Cadet brings Brentford back into the game. 2-3 on the night. The regular, as Steve Perryman has christened him, that's exactly how he got his nickname there. Turned away from defender Colin Hendry. 
He's so dangerous in the box, that ball seems to be glued to his boot sometimes. Defenders don't like to commit themselves and dive in. He's already won the club a couple of penalties here this season. On that occasion, he didn't need a spot kick to make it count. The left footer was rifled in, low past Geno. No chance once again for the Rovers keeper. And just like the first goal, Cadets finishing, proving deadly tonight, his second of the night. That's his fifth of the season, and Brentford get one back. So, five goals we've had here already so far in this tie. Fine cup tie this is proving to be. Now Rovers on the charge. Kennedy goes sprawling, looks appealingly at the referee, and wins nothing more than a corner, and in fact was rather fortunate to win that. Cross came in from John Miller. Played a handful of games up the road from here at Stanford Bridge. But his career never really took off at Chelsea, and the number three as his cross came in. Ball broke for Andy Kennedy. He looked to surge past two Brentford defenders. Rather played for the penalty, but here comes that corner. Across to the far side, this is Kennedy. Alan Ainsco and Brentford with a throw. So once again, just to remind you of the score, it's Brentford 2, Blackburn Rovers 3. And it's Brentford 3, Blackburn Rovers 6 on aggregate. Now Millen have to be careful because Kennedy's a sharp character. But on Once Hendry out jumps Gary Blissett. Stanislaus, speedy as he is, won't keep that one in. was close to seeing that one go over his head. Howard Gale has come in field. With Nicky Reed on the far side. Reed lays it back to Gale. He looks up, a lazy little dink in. Terry Evans. And my goodness me, tremendous drive from Simon down with the flags up. He wouldn't have counted. But once again, the man who's been the leading scorer that he would part for more seasons than I care to remember ever since he came into this Blackburn side. Ten years ago, Simon Garner has scored goals, and he doesn't need to be told twice where the goalposts are. That shot only just fractionally off target. It wouldn't have counted. Although, of course, Simon Garner wasn't to know that when he put the shot in. Now, Brentford have a free kick on the halfway line. Still looking to get back on level terms on the night. 2-3 down, but they need three goals to bring us back to all square. Cadet, now Richard Cadet, what can he do from there? Turns the ball back in, no, can't find a Brentford there. Having taken the ball off the foot of the keeper, and back in field to Andy Sinton, and it's there, and Brentford have equalised. Andy Sinton, two against Southend a couple of days ago. Rovers seem to have cleared the ball there, and Cadet could do see a little danger at the near post. But Brentford battled back to thread the ball back through the Rovers' defence as they came out. Andy Sinton was in behind. The rifle a low right footer in off the post. And my goodness me, it's hard to keep up with the goal tally here. It's now Brentford 3, Blackburn Rovers 3 on the night. Six goals in the game so far. And if I can get my arithmetic right on aggregate, it's Brentford 4, Blackburn Rovers 6. And just ten minutes ago, having said that surely Brentford were going out of the competition. Well, another two, and it'll be the comeback of the decade. Could be in fact the comeback of the whole competition. Three all on the night. Six for all the Rovers on aggregate. Jamie Bates, a handball, gives Rovers this free kick. 
25 yards from goal. Sellers with the chip. The whistle's gone. But, once again, the referee wants us to play on. So let's keep the game going. This is a tremendous cup tie. Really is something that the fans will savour in the winter months to come on video. Ball out of play right in front of us. Once again, the game is building. Ball. Oh, on we go. Maybe Sinton. Up over the halfway line to Gary Blissett. He puts his head down and runs across infield to Bob Booker. Played on to Jamie Bates. Checks, comes back infield and makes progress. Jamie Bates. Crowd really getting behind their team now. They're loving this. Brentford refusing to lay down and die in this tie. And they have the ball back again. It's with Jones, wide to Feely. Ball will cannon off Sellers for a throw. And the crowd really starting to find their voice as Brentford have come back from 3-1 down in this second half, showing tremendous fighting qualities and great character. And they win a free kick. Well, no doubt about it, stirring stuff here in Griffin Park tonight. If it's goals you want, let's get down to Griffin Park. Four on Sunday, and six so far this evening, and my goodness me, this game's not over yet. Sinton looking for Blissett. Blissett with the flick header, great save by the keeper. Terry Geno flings himself to his right and claws the ball off the line from Gary Blissett's flick header. Andy Sinton's free kick almost producing Brentford's fourth. And their third in what would be a purple patch of 15 minutes here in the second half. They have a corner on the far side. This is far and away the most exciting soccer we've seen here so far this season. There are 15 minutes to go in this Littlewoods Cup tie. As Blissett comes forward once again, Brentford. Plenty of bodies in that Blackburn penalty area. The ball is right forward. The only blue and white shot forward is Simon Garner. Garner now has support arriving on this far side. The ball laid into the path of Nicky Reid and a tremendous covering tackle by Jamie Bates. Brentford playing above themselves now in all positions. goes charging in Bates oh, Brentford of course are exposed at the back they're leaving gaps they're pushing men forward they've got no alternative Wiseman's flag is up There are 15 minutes to go, and Brentford need just two to take the tie into extra time. A tie that surely they seem to be beyond them. And De Sinton behind for a goal kick. Well, another Brentford score now really would spread panic through that Blackburn Rovers defence. The Crystal Palace manager Steve Cobble was telling me today that although his team had lost 5-4 on Saturday and Blackburn were a dangerous outfit, he still reckoned that their defence would ship goals. And so it's proved here tonight as Blissett attempts to dummy the defenders. And Cadet just can't quite get away once again. Looking for his hat-trick here tonight. Two from him, one from leading scorer Andy Sinton. Jones lays the ball off to Roger Stanislaus, Bob Booker, Gary Blissett on the far side. The pass was not a good one. Jones will get another chance. Looking to get Sinton inside the fullback, but John Miller is wise to that one, having been caught out for the third goal. And it's with Terry Geno. Two on two here at the back. 
end-to-end -end stuff. Thrilling stuff here for the fans. And the whistle's gone. Brentford win a free kick in a dangerous position. Now then. Is that another booking? No, just a talking to because Colin Hendry, in fact, has already found himself in the referee's book and the second caution there would have resulted in a red card for the Rovers' central defender. Can Brentford somewhere, somehow, find a fourth that would set us up for a grandstand finish? Scott Sellers and Andy Sinton. Ball still in play. It's with Roger Stanislaus, come across to this near side. Finds Terry Evans, and his header still bobbling around there. And Stanislaus, the foot was rather high. So Rovers can put the lid on things for a second or two, calm things down with a free kick. They have both their substitutes warming up. Brentford have both theirs on the pitch. And there's a kick on the upper thigh of Atkins. For me, he's been the best Blackburn player on view tonight. Although one has to be fair and say that his direct opponent, Neil Smiley, hobbled out of this game just before half-time. And here it was that scored the uh, Rovers' second goal with the header just after the break. Now Kennedy, can he keep the ball in play on the far side? No, he can't. And there's no respite here, I can tell you, from the action. Brentford desperately keen to get on with things. I make it, we're down to the last 12 and a half minutes as Jones is sent sprawling in the centre circle with the challenge from Nicky Reed. Uh, Alan Ainsco, I beg your pardon. It's with Bates. Stanislaus had dropped off his man, but it's into Millen. Richard Cadet twisting and turning once again. Cadet moves. Cadet is still on the ball. Lays it back to... And there's the fourth, a tremendous strike by Jones. And just as we were saying, a fourth Brentford goal really would set the crowd alight. There it is. Richard Cadet this time turns goal maker. And from 25 yards, skipper Keith Jones drew back the right foot. And he sent a thunderbolt low past Jerry Gano. A tremendous goal. And Brentford are now just one off making this game go into extra time. This is going to be a tremendous last 10 minutes here at Griffin Park. Already a game here that nobody in the ground is going to forget for a long, long time. It's Brentford 4, Blackburn Rovers 3, after Brentford had trailed 3-1 in this second half. Andy Sinton, he'll get the cross in from there. The cross this time is beyond the far post and out of play. So, just eight minutes remaining on my watch. It's Brentford four, Blackburn three on the night. On aggregate, it's now Brentford five, Blackburn Rovers six. Seven goals we've had here at Griffin Park. And every single one of them has been a good goal as well, I can tell you. None better, though, than that last strike of skipper Keith Jones. The ball thundering low into the net to the right of Terry Geno through a forest of legs. And it's going to be all action and frantic stuff here as we get down to the death. One more goal from the home side will take us into extra time for what will be the comeback of the decade. Brentford 4-3 on the night. Just one behind on aggregate. They've given the ball away to Scott Sellers. And Sellers runs straight into Jamie Bates. The flag is up on the far side. Cadets offside. Well, win, lose or draw, Brentford have won many friends here tonight and the fans are going to go away 
singing the praises of their team and only sorry that they just gave away a couple of goals either side of half time which really left them with this mountain to climb but my goodness how they've come back manager Perryman must be proud of all 13 players who've taken part in this game for Brentford one of the most exciting games seen at Griffin Park in many many years flag is up Kennedy's offside led by a clear four goals on aggregate so off we go again Terry Evans thunders the free kick forward it falls to Roger Stanislaus real still Stanislaus can't get a shot in played out wide to Howard Gale Blackburn on the break Brentford frantically funnel back was the ball out of play on the far side it is now Rovers have the throw All Blackburn have to do is hang on, and the tie is theirs. Brentford have somehow got to find a last gasp goal. They're battling for every single ball here. Richard Cadet, and surely David Mayle has earned himself a booking there by that piece of impetuous behaviour. Kicking the ball away from the free kick award to waste valuable seconds and all it's earned him is another booking on the Blackburn side number six David Mayo uh, just a little bit of rashness there on the part of the Rovers number six it's a yellow card skipper Keith Jones plays the ball forward Millen this time the flick can't find Cadet. Terry Geno gives his forwards chance to Marshall. And on the far side, ball is out of play with a throw to Brentford. Seven goals in this classic cup tie, real end to end stuff with the lead changing hands. Brentford in the first half and then dramatically at the start of the second suddenly finding themselves 3-1 down and now they've come back to lead 4-3 they concede a free kick right under the referee's nose in the center circle they'll want to regain possession of this ball as quickly as they can because the minutes are ticking by defeat if it is indeed to be defeat will be defeat with honor and defeat with dignity and my goodness how they've given Blackburn from the top of the second division are pasting here tonight. Into effect, back to Smelders, and away we go again. Colin Hendry was close to seeing that ball escape him and gets the ball out. Only as far as Stanislaus. Jamie Bates pumps it forward. Gary Blissett does so well. Great control. A terrible challenge on Blissett, who is clattered from behind by the number three that's John Miller well, that really was a bad challenge and it's another booking another booking I'm afraid if your view is obscured by the stanchion but you'll have to take my word that that was a very bad challenge on Blissett it's a booking for Miller fourth booking of the night now for the Rovers team and perhaps Brentford's last chance to make Rovers suffer Andy Sinton with the free kick bless it and the header is inches wide of the post well some people around me thought that one was in the back of the net Gary Blissett climbed highest he was the header that saw that ball agonizingly wide of Geno's post with the goalkeeper absolutely rooted to his line but the chance has gone the referee's looking at his watch. It's still Brentford 4, Blackburn 3. 6-5 Rovers lead over the two legs. 11 goals over the two matches in this Littlewoods Cup second round. Surely one of the ties of the round. The ball drops behind the fullback down into that Blackburn corner with Jamie Bates. Wrestling he is to try and get the cross in away from Atkins. There's Cadet with the back header. Sinton 
Sinton drives, it takes a deflection. Geno going the wrong way, gets down to smother the ball. But once again, Brentford so close to that fifth goal. Terry Geno for a second was wrong-footed by the deflection. It came from Sinton. Seemed to be just creeping underneath the keeper's body. He gets a touch on it for the corner. In it comes from Sinton. This time it's not a good one. Roger Stanislaus swings a foot. The ball will break to Andy Sinton once again. Sinton is his legs taken from him. In fact, the referee decides that that's a no foul, and away we go. We're still on playing live here. Scott Sellers trying to get Simon Garner away, but the crowd incensed by that challenge on Andy Sinton. It's left the Brentford man prostrate. No foul was given. The initiative passed to Rovers. As Andy Feeney goes battling in for the ball with Scott Sellers, then the boots are flying in front of us. Rovers have a throw. Making tremendous saves. And a Gary Blissett header that just flashed the wrong side of the post. Cadet is battling with the ball. The whistle has gone once again. Tempers are getting frayed here in front of us. This really is blood and thunder stuff now. Into the final few seconds of this cup tie. Brentford still need one more to take us into extra time. Andy Feely hesitates with the free kick. Surely just distance on it, Andy. Into that Rovers penalty area. Keith Jones, can he do it again? And the young Brentford skipper this time unable to repeat his success. Well, whatever happens in these final seconds, I'm sure Brentford will leave the field to a rousing farewell from their supporters for their performance tonight over the 90 minutes. And Scott Sellers will run and run until the final whistle. And Howard Gale is through to the byline. Howard Gale goes tumbling, and the referee has awarded a penalty. Now, judge for yourselves. No doubt about it, that settles the tie, but I really thought that was a piece of pure professionalism from Howard Gale. No doubt about his speed taking him past Jamie Bates and Keith Millen initially, but with the ball seemingly drifting out for a goal kick. Well, Gale just threw himself to the deck. And the referee, I must say, had no hesitation in awarding a spot kick. It's a spot kick that Howard Gale himself will take. And this to tie it up at the four all on the evening and once again establish that two goal cushion that Blackburn brought down with them for the second tie and it's saved, justice is done, John Smelders goes the right way, the kick from Howard Gale is not a good one, no power in the right footer, it was well placed but Smelders covers himself in glory going down to that left hand post and saving at the expense of a corner, so we've had it all here tonight, seven goals Half a dozen bookings, Griffin Park. The referee signalling to the linesman that time is up as Howard Gale thumps the ball forward. It's the final action of a tremendous Littlewoods Cup tie here at Griffin Park this evening. A final score on the night which sees Brentford cover themselves in glory as they go out of the competition, beating Blackburn Rovers in a memorable game by four goals to three. It's not enough over the two ties. Blackburn Rovers doing better than they did last season when they went out at the same stage to Liverpool have tonight won on aggregate by six goals to five. We've had seven goals here this evening, a game which I'm sure nobody in the stadium is going to forget for a long, long time. Brentford having taken the lead in the first half through Richard Cadet, suddenly conceding three goals, one just before the break from Simon Garner. And then at the start of the second half, Atkins... And then a third Rovers goal through Scott Sellers seeming to tie the game up. And Brentford coming back with tremendous spirit. A second for Richard Cadet on the night. The equaliser from Andy Sinton. And then Brentford's winner from Keith Jones. It wasn't enough. We had a penalty save in the dying seconds. All action, all tremendous excitement and entertainment for the big crowd here this evening. And a final score at Griffin Park as the teams leave the field. My name is Philip Meisen on behalf of New Sonic Video Productions, a game which finishes Brentford 4, Blackburn Rovers 3.